Hey guys, long time no see. Today we're going to write a simple recursive descent parser for evaluating mathematical formulae. This is one of my favorite examples for recursion because it's uh, non-trivial and it's very practical, certainly more practical than calculating Fibonacci numbers or other classic examples for recursion. So the point of parsers in general is to take um, a string and turn it into some other structured data. Normally you would turn this into an abstract syntax tree if you're a compiler writer. But for this simple example, I just want to transform the string into an int. In this case, I would like to transform it into 26, if I'm not mistaken. So the classic approach is to split the problem of parsing the string into several functions, each function responsible uh, for a small subproblem. The smallest subproblem is to pass numbers and I'm, I'm going to make it even smaller. I'm only going to allow single digit numbers. So I want to write one function, pass factor, which is responsible for detecting that this is a digit and um, it transforms this digit into the integer two. So maybe we should simply start with that. Um, Pass factor. Okay, as you can see, I have a global variable. Global variables are evil, I know, but for the purposes of this video, it's going to be a lot um, easier to understand uh, having just one pointer uh, instead of having several pointers and all pointers clogging up this very limited space. So this uh, global variable is going to point to where I am currently in the parsing process inside the string. So let's start at the uh, at the first character. Uh, I can I can even show you starting at the first character. Let's, let's execute the main function. You can see pointers uh, can or, or are visualized by orange arrows. Maybe you've already seen this. Okay, after we've initialized x. We call the pass factor function and uh, store the result in a variable so we can see it. And uh, for, we have to do some error checking inside pass factor because we are not guaranteed that indeed it uh, will only contain numbers and not other strange characters like letters or exclamation marks, uh, etc. So let's check if the character we currently point to is. Um, a valid digit. This is a well-known trick. We simply check if it lies within uh, 0 and 9. And if it does, we return the value sub and subtract uh, 0 from it. This is important. If we didn't do this, uh, 0 has the ASCII code 48, 9 has the ASCII code 57. If we didn't subtract 48, we would get nonsense numbers. Uh, I want a number, an integer between 0 and 9, not between 48 and 57. And also, um, pass factor should increment x by 1 um, because we have just consumed, we have consumed this digit, we are, we are done with it, uh, we no longer need to look at it. Oh, whoops, what have I done here? <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. Okay. So first we check if star x, which is this box, x points to this box, uh, contains a value between 0 and 9, indeed it does. So um, we subtract, in this case, uh, the ASCII code 50 from 48, which is 2, exactly the number that we need. And uh, in the process, we are also going to increment the pointer x, so it should point to the next um, character inside the string. There we are. Okay. What do we do if uh, it's not a digit? Let's do some very simple error reporting. Expected digit, but found whatever character there is. And I'm not going to return a value, which is a very bad practice. Um, we even get a warning that we don't return a result on all the code paths. So at runtime, if I get a parsing error, this particular IDE of mine will crash. Uh, your IDE or your compiler or runtime environment will probably do um, less benign stuff. Okay, 
So I'm reasonably convinced that it works. Let's test it. Let's start with A, which is not a digit. Let's see if it works. Okay, A is not between 0 and 9, and we should get the uh, error message expected digit, but found A. Let's see. There we are. Okay, and then we will crash. Missing return statement. Good. So this seems to work for single digits. Now let's write the next function above, pass product. What do we have to do in pass product? If we, if we look at the first product, the first product contains of one factor, then a multiplication sign and another factor. Uh, we could have an arbitrary number of um, multiplication sign and another factor after that. So we'll have to use some kind of loop. But first, let's start with the first factor. So we pass that. And after we pass it, we would expect x to point to this star. Um, maybe there's a star, maybe there isn't. We have to check. So let's check if indeed there is a star. And if there is, uh, we skip it and pass the next factor. When this call returns, uh, we are going to have two numbers, two and three, and um, we can immediately multiply them. There is no need to defer this calculation. We can evaluate from left to right. And um, right, nothing more to do in the loop. Then we can have uh, further multiplications. We don't have them in this, in this example. And when there are no more further multiplications, we, we can simply return uh, the, the product that we calculated. Okay, let's put this to test. Let's pass a product and see what happens. Okay, so by passing a product first means we have to pass a factor. Okay, so this variable is going to, to be um, allocated, but we don't know the value yet. Here it is. Okay, first factor is this two, it's a valid digit, so we can simply return two and increment x. And now we check, is there something to multiply? Because we could have started with two plus something and there would have been no need to multiply something. Indeed, we have to multiply. So let's skip the star and uh, pass the next factor, the three. Three is a valid digit, let's return it and increment x. Okay, and now we can, for, for the first time, multiply these two factors. 2 times 3 should be 6. So I would expect 6 to show up here, and fact 2 should disappear because it falls out of scope at this closing brace. Yes. Okay, is there still more stuff to multiply? No, there isn't, because plus is not a star. So we can return 6 to our caller, which was which was here, so I would expect 6 to be stored inside the variable result. There we are. Okay, this seems to work as well. So we can continue with the next function, pass sum, which is structured extremely similarly like pass product. You can see um, what does it mean to pass a sum. First we have to pass a product, then we look, oh, Indeed, we have to add something, so let's pass another product and then we can add these two products. So it's exactly the same structure as below. Let's call it product1. Uh, then we have to loop. Do we have to add something or not? Then we have to skip the plus sign and get the next product. Oh, sorry. Why did I write the numbers here? That doesn't make sense. Okay, now we have two products. In our example, I would expect 6 and 20. So we can add them together. And when there's nothing more to add, we can return whatever we have calculated. Okay, let's see if this works. So, we, in order to add stuff, we first have to pass the first product. Okay, in order to multiply stuff, we have to get the first factor. Uh, 2 is a valid factor, we already saw this. Uh, yes, there's a star, let's skip the star. 
Let's get the second factor. 3 is a valid factor. Let's return it in increment x. And now we can multiply 2 and 3. We already saw this just for repetition. Nothing more to multiply. We can return the 6. Now we return the 6 not to the main function, but here to the pass sum function. We know that the first product is 6 at this point, And now we have to see if we have to add something. Yes, we have. So let's skip the plus sign. And now we uh, need to pass the next product, which eventually will be 20. Okay. Product consists of the first factor, which is 4 in this case. Let's return it in increment x. Indeed, we have to multiply. Let's skip the star, get the next factor. 5 is a valid digit. Let's return it in increment x. Now there's nothing stopping us from multiplying these two numbers together. 4 times 5 is 20. There we are. Um, now there's nothing left to multiply. We can uh, leave the loop and return the result 20. Now for the first time we can add two numbers because we know that 2 times 3 is 6 and we know that 4 times 5 is 20. So let's add these two together. Uh, 6 plus 20 is 26. There we are. Nothing more to add. And we can return 26 as the result to the main function. There we are. Okay, this was simple stuff, not recursive so far. Um, but recursive descent parsers are called recursive descent parsers for a reason. The next example I want to make work is parenthesized sub expressions. Let's say now, for now, I can only multiply single digits, but I also want to be able to multiply um, parenthesized expressions. So we have to um, change the definition of, uh, definition of factor. What is it that I can multiply? What is a factor? Digits are still factors, but also parenthesized expressions should be factors as well. So let's um, add another case. Um, x points to an opening parent. We can um, skip it. Let's write, I don't know, consume the opening parent just for clarity. And now inside these parentheses um, we can have an arbitrarily complex expression which is on the top level a sum. We started with a sum because sums um, the, the plus operator binds least tightly. So we can simply call um, the pass sum function. And when will the pass sum function stop? Uh, it will stop at this point because uh, it will it will recognize that there's nothing more to add because this is not a plus symbol. So uh, we will skip the closing parent here. Of course in a real parser you, you would have to check that indeed it is a closing parent. Let's just skip it for, for simplicity here. And then we can return the sum. Okay. Now let's see if this works. Uh, we would expect 2 times 7 should be 14. Let's see if this works. Okay. Now the first part is not uh, terribly interesting. Um, we already know uh, that the first product is a factor, is a digit. So we can return 2. We have to multiply. Now it gets a little more interesting. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is not a digit, so we will skip this if, but it is indeed an opening parent. So let's skip the opening parent. And now we call pass sum, even though pass sum is still uh, active. Pass sum, you can see it, defines a variable pro1 and we still haven't uh, filled this variable with a useful value. This, this call hasn't returned yet. Okay, what happens if we call pass sum again? I would expect um, new variables to appear here as soon as we declare them inside um, the function. And also sum is going to be declared first. So we, we will see sum here waiting for the result. And now we are inside pass sum for the second time. And if I step into pass product, you will see that we are waiting for this call to return so we know what the first product inside the parenthesis is. So this is the first product outside of the parenthesis, which would be the entire expression. And this is the first product uh, inside the parenthesis, which would be 3. Okay, so we pass 
uh, 3, nothing new here. Uh, we have nothing to multiply, so we can just return the 3. Uh, we still have to add, okay, so skip the plus symbol, get the next product, uh, get the next factor, 4 is a digit, we return the 4, nothing more to multiply because there is no multiplication. Uh, so we can simply return fact 1, what, what is what is fact 1 in this case, 4, okay, where is it returned? Okay, now we know that uh, inside the parents we have two products, three and four, which are quite trivial products. We <laughs> didn't really uh, uh, multiply them with anything. And now we have to add them. We have to add three and four to get seven. Here's seven. Um, then there's nothing left to do inside the parents. So we can return the seven to our caller, which was pass factor at this point. Okay, so we know that the sum inside the parenthesis is seven. Uh, we can skip the closing parent and return the seven to our caller. Who was our caller? Uh, pass product because we were in the process of a multiplication. Okay, so now we can multiply two times seven, which is 14. Uh, nothing left to multiply. We only had one multiplication. So we, we can return the 14 to our caller. Um, okay, and now uh, nothing left to add because uh, at the top level there was no addition. We can we don't even enter this loop in this activation, and we return the fourteen to the main function. There we are, fourteen. Okay, these are the basics of uh, recursive descent parsing. Now there are several several possible uh, future directions for our little parser. We can do better error handling. Uh, we can do, let's say, multi-digit numbers. Um, we can do multiplication and division. And maybe you can come up with even more useful stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. Thank you and goodbye.